let's play one of the prayers that Paul prays over um, over the church in Ephesus. And um, yeah, one of the things he prays in Ephesians 1.17 is that uh, says that uh, he prays and uh, he says, uh, verse 16, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his uh, mighty power. Okay. Um, I know we've prayed this before, um, prayed this over us before, um, but we're going to pray just one aspect of it, right? Which is um, verse 19. It says that you uh, may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power and uh, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. So uh, we just pray and ask the Lord to give us a revelation, give us a knowing, um, which could be you know, a knowing on the inside or even an experience uh, um, that he may lead us to know what is the greatness of his um, awesome power, uh, which is at work in us. Right? And, uh, and it's the work of the Holy Spirit, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. So. Yeah, so let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Just like Paul prayed over the believers in Ephesus, Lord, we pray, Lord, over each one of us right now and over our own selves, Lord. We pray, God, that you would give us, Lord, that the eyes of your understanding might be opened, O oh God, might be enlightened, O oh God, right? that we may know there'd be a revelation in our inner man, Lord about the hope of the calling and particularly God we pray that uh, we would know the extent Lord the uh, the, um, the extent and the, of the exceeding greatness of your power Lord which is at work in us Lord the work of the Holy Spirit which is at work in us that we may know what is it that we are recipients of God that we may know the greatness of your power God greatness of your power to enable us to walk in righteousness, the greatness of your power, to make, oh God, uh, spiritual choices, the greatness of your power, God, to, um, to do great exploits, oh God, the greatness of your power, Lord, the same kind of power, God, that uh, with which you raised the Lord from the dead, the same kind of power which, which you anointed him, Lord, what we read in Acts 10, 38, that he went about doing good, Lord, that we might know the greatness of your power. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you. We bless your name. Yes, Father God, the greatness of your power, Lord, which is so pure, so holy and infinite, unmatchable, God, indescribable, God. Yes, Lord, overwhelm us with your power this morning, God. Overwhelm us with your power this morning, Father God. Yes, Master, we pray that we may experience your power in our bodies, Lord, that we may experience your power in our minds, in our spirit, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Many times we have underestimated, Lord, your power. Lord, we have um, we've been ignorant of that, oh God. But we know the same person, God, the same person who forgives, who loves, who redeems, the same person who extends this awesome power. And both come from you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. And we receive you. Yes, Lord. We receive it, God. We receive you. We receive it. Thank you for your presence and your power, which go hand in hand. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. And I just decree, God, that uh, you would enable each one of us to do great exploits, God, for the sake of your kingdom. Great exploits, Master. As you declared in Daniel, that they that know their God, Master, that we may know you in this aspect. Lord, that we might have fellowship, close walk, intimacy with you in this aspect, O oh God, and that they that know their God shall be strong. And I just declare each one here strong 
not feeble but strong strong in spirit strong in the in their soul realm and so strong in body god i declare each and every one strong in the name of jesus and your word says that they will be strong and do great exploits so lord yes lord pray god that we will discover and walk in those good good works that you prepared great exploits we decree that great exploits in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name. Let's just thank him for some time. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. We, we give you praise. We thank you that you, Lord, Lord, that we are privileged to be recipients of this. We thank you that we are privileged to be walking in this, Master. Hallelujah. Thank you. What an awesome privilege, God. What an awesome responsibility, God. We thank you, God. We thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for the new life. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us. We thank you, God, for, for uh, Lord, for the regeneration, for renewing us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. Praise God. I believe it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I do believe that for you, it's been a good journey so far, right from the start uh, of our um, course uh, till now, that uh, it's been, uh, it's added another dimension to your life. Um, I hope it's deepened uh, your walk with God and uh, deepened your understanding of um, the, the Holy Spirit, the person, the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and just like, uh, you know, uh, way by way of reminder that we would um, choose to walk in, that we would intentionally choose to walk in all that we have learned and put to practice, right? That we will not neglect, especially in the area of the gifts and, and every other thing, right? That we will not ne neglect it, but we would remind ourselves and that we would choose to walk in it, okay? Right. So today, um, let's bring to a close what we've been studying about the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, we've been looking at uh, how um, the, some of the foundations. Right, we looked at love being a foundation. We looked at identity, and uh, we looked at uh, Christ-likeness. Right. Um, so if you are following in the in the in, in the book, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we're looking at the chapter proper foundation. And we'll, uh, particularly, we're looking at point number four, which is page 209, um, to maintain accurate doctrine, right? to maintain accurate doctrine. Okay, let me just project it so you can take a look. Okay, there you go. Okay. So um, to maintain accurate doctrine, uh, you know, in First Timothy four sixteen, Paul very clearly instructs um, Timothy says, "Take heed to yourself," which means um, you know, uh, uh, you consider yourself, be careful about how you live, uh, be mindful, and to the doctrine, okay, meaning the teaching um, and what you believe in, what you teach others, etc. Continue in them. For in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. So um, the doctrine, it's very important. And uh, we are called to continue in it. Okay? Uh, Hebrews 13 and verse 9, the, the author of Hebrews says, Do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. Okay, So various and strange doctrines, which means that it's, it's, it's something that is not from the word, or it, maybe it has a strange mixture. Um, second part of that verse, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with food which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. Right? So, um, so when it comes to strange doctrine, when it comes to strange teaching, um, it actually uh, moves us away uh, from the words of grace, the words of faith, um, what is of grace and what is of faith moves us away. Um, so avoid that. Uh, as much as we pursue 
Christ-likeness, as much as we pursue uh, the, the presence and the power of God, the gifts, you know, uh, because Paul says desire spiritual gifts, as much as we hunger for both, we need to be rooted in the Word of God, right? Because, uh, well, history is full of people who who lost their, uh, their anchor. They were not anchored to the Word, but they were sincere. They were sincere, they were hungry. But somehow they went uh, off because they were not rooted to the word of God, right? So, so Paul, if you look at First Timothy, Second Timothy, you see that Paul time and again comes back to that. So, be rooted in the word, rightly divide the word of God. So there is no, um, you know, there is no substitute to grow in our personal study, God, and also to test what we are receiving and. Uh, being open for correction, being accountable, being open for correction, whether it's you know prophetic words or you know being open and staying in that place of humility is uh, is the safest place. Right? Is uh, uh, being clothed in humility and being in that place of humility, while at the same time being rooted in the Word and seeking and pursuing um, the presence and power of God. You know, that's the right thing to do. Um, so com common errors could be you know grandeur, megalomania. Uh, doctrinal deviations and also, you know, some new age teaching, um, which are totally non-biblical. Um, so, you know, move away from it, especially when it comes to dreams and visions and, you know, interpretation of dreams and visions. Um, a lot of people sometimes what they do is just um, uh, mix some of these new age things, you know, like, okay, this is what uh, it means this is what it uh, it uh, you know symbolizes and so on symbolically this is what it represents but you know our source is the word of god you know we depend on the spirit of god uh, we depend on the word of god uh, the word of god itself has a lot of um, uh, you know a lot of symbols are actually explained the dove the serpent the fire the rain uh, everything is explained in the word of god is in the word of god right so uh, we we go by the word of god and uh, not to any other source uh, we go with the spirit of god because he's the one who gives us the interpretation interpretation belongs to god right so like joseph said so um so it comes from him therefore we depend on him okay Another thing is to, uh, you know, when we look at um, the fruit of the spirit, if you look at it, love, joy, peace, talks about self-control or self-governing ability. Right? So self-governing ability, which is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, is is very very important. Okay, so this self-governing ability or this self-control enables us or keeps us in that place. Uh, where we do not step out and become presumptuous or we are not moved um, by the things of the flesh or uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, it, it's not an emotional impulse or emotional leading. All that is avoided um, when we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is self-control. Okay, so if the Spirit of God is not leading, then we, are, we need to be secure in ourselves not to do anything, right? In the sense, we don't have to prove anything to anybody. We don't have to be under pressure to give a word also. Um, but we can be secure in the fact that, hey, uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not receiving anything. I, I don't believe that uh, I should actually step out and do anything, right? Um, so um, to be secure, in that so if the lord has spoken then we will uh, obey and move and share or do according to the instruction of the holy spirit uh, otherwise you know we need to develop uh, self-restraint or self-control and, and not do anything and be secure about it you know, not be under pressure uh, and not think that oh i have not shared anything so therefore you know, I'm less of a minister of God or I'm less of a believer. I'm a second class citizen in the kingdom of God. No, nothing of that sort, right? Um, so, so that's the thing. Okay. Um, another aspect is to grow within a local church community. You know, 
we are the body of Christ, which means uh, you know each one of us is um, needs to be part of the local church. Right? Each one of us is a member. First Corinthians chapter twelve talks about how we are baptized in the spiritual body of Christ, and practically, how do we live that out? Well, this is great in theory. You know, it seems like wow, wonderful. We are all part of the body of Christ, but practically day to day the way we live it out is when we are part of a local church and that's where we can live out this spiritual truth of being members of the body so member uh, members do not float around members of the body are attached to the body you know all these practical things um, are possible or lived out when we are part of the local church right so uh, being part of the local church also helps us to be accountable to one another, to help one another, to receive help, to receive help, to receive correction, etc. So we know that there is no local church which is perfect. You know, we're all works in progress. Being mindful of that and being part of a church which does not compromise on the foundations, right? Uh, and being part of that. So that will also help us. Um, Hebrews 13 and verse 17 says, Obey those who rule over you. Be submissive, for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Okay. So um, so this is possible again only if we are connected to a local church, only if we are serving uh, in a local church, only if we... Uh, choose to, you know, serve under the leadership of the local church. And also, you know, in such an environment, we will also grow and uh, come to a place of leading others as well, grow, mature, and come to a place of leading others as well. So it's a, it's a biblical model. It's a scriptural uh, design. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's God's design, divine design. So it's good. Um, and that's, um, that's a safety net again for us not to go off on a tangent and uh, you know go off into error and uh, bring a lot of damage to the body of Christ okay um, so so that's the thing so that brings us to the end of uh, um, you know what we uh, been looking as at uh, the gifts of the spirit and also the aspect of uh, you know the foundations uh, of for the for the release of the gifts, the right way uh, for these gifts to be uh, used uh, for the building of the body, right? Okay. So, any questions? Anything uh, with regard to what we have seen so far, uh, or anything that you, any of your experiences that you'd like to share? Um, any questions at all? Uh, we can take a look at that. Just a minute, please. Yes, uh, Divya. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. I was just uh, uh, had a question regarding uh, when uh, interpretation of dreams and such things. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, as you had mentioned, uh, yeah, uh, the Bible records that God is the interpreter of dreams. Uh, so uh, that uh, there are times when we get dreams that uh, seem to be like from God, and sometimes there can be dreams that seem to be from the evil one so uh there how can we discern uh, and also uh, yeah basically the interpretation you know how uh, like how do we understand and whether we need to take any action upon those things. yeah 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 so um so dreams have different sources right um, uh, of course you'll be learning more in uh, when we study prophecy and understanding the prophetic so dreams have different sources one is uh, you know of course uh, dreams do come from god because we see in scripture that god does uh, communicate to us in dreams um and dreams visions and so on uh, dreams do come from our own self because of our own uh, you know, through much activity of the mind, um, some things that we are preoccupied with, some things that we are, you know, maybe worried about, which we are fearful about, and we constantly think about, and that manifests itself as dreams. Uh, or it could be even, um, you know, something that's, 
something that's uh, you know some substances that we are using let's say, let's say medicines or, um, or something of that sort you know uh, which also costs uh, it's possible that it comes because of that and we also know that it it can be because of the evil one right so we have all these possible causes uh, or sources of dreams um, so but when uh, when god speaks um, you know like when we see uh, when we, when we looked at the person of the Holy Spirit, he convicts, he does not condemn. So even if uh, a dream, ha in content-wise, it has something that is disturbing, uh, from the Holy Spirit, it, it brings about conviction. It brings about, there is a sense of peace about it, right? Um, but when, uh, when it's from the evil one, it is always to create fear, to create intimidation, to to cause us to react in fear maybe to cause us to make some decisions out of fear and not out of faith right so um so we know that it's it's not from god okay so best thing to do of course uh, in in whatever case might be is to pray and ask the lord because uh, he would lead us he would guide us right so again it's um, uh, like we see in all the other uh, you know all the other things when it comes to gifts, uh, when it comes to being led by the Spirit of God, um, it again comes back to comes down to relationship. It comes down to intimacy with God, right? So the best thing is to pray and to grow in in that understanding of being led by Him. So when we pray and ask Him for um, interpretation, you know the Lord will confirm uh, either through His Word through uh, so we when we pray and ask you know we are we are sensitive again in uh, when it comes to our spirit senses you know, like what we have been seeing we are sensitive again and saying god you know you speak and what is it that you can confirm he will confirm through scripture he will confirm through his spirit uh and he will do that right? uh, there are some some dreams which are there just for us just just to alert us and uh, maybe to pray uh, along that line you know pray for protection maybe maybe that's a, it's you know some disturbing dream something like an accident or something like a disaster uh, but it could be that god wants us to pray pray for protection pray so that that very thing does not happen you know in the, in the case of uh, uh, the famine it was a, it was something that was going to happen um, but uh, if you see the redemptive side of it there was that word of wisdom and the strategy which God gave, uh, which Joseph shared, and that saved the nation, right? So, um, so that's that's the thing. So the dream, dream came as a warning, as a something to alert the people, and uh, and then also um, because of the word which came, uh, word of wisdom, you know, uh, which uh, Joseph shared, the whole nation was shared. So who oh, saved? Sorry. So that's the thing. So. Um, yeah so the interpretation uh, would come from him so it's to it's it's you know we can ask him we can receive from him and we can walk in it right so the lord will confirm um, so we don't have to be anxious about it but uh, we can be at peace and say okay god you know, uh, my posture is this you know i want to receive from you i want to hear from you um, and if it is from you please confirm it if it is not you know i'm just going to Put it on the shelf and till you confirm it or till you move me to action so that's that's the way to go about it right okay okay thank you Pastor. okay right okay so um okay so shall we move on then so we'll move on to the next um topic which is uh which is from your notes which is uh, the anointing that is something that we hear over and over again the anointing or we use uh, over and over again the anointing of the holy spirit um, which talks about the empowering presence of the holy spirit okay when we say anointing um, it, it refers to the uh, empowering presence of the holy spirit to anoint means to smear actually uh, in the old testament the anointed uh, with oil, with oil uh, and what was uh, used in the temple or used in the tabernacle the, the utensils everything was anointed uh, with the anointing oil and we read about the anointing oil 
uh, being uh, uh, you know a special mixture of of spices and so on and and this was not to be used on uh, it was not to be for common use um, so you know it, it it was a type of the holy spirit and the work of the holy spirit right so so we see that um, so when we when we refer to the anointing of the holy spirit we are talking about um, the presence and power of the holy spirit okay so we read about how um, you know in luke chapter 4 and verse 18 let's look at that verse luke 4 verse 18 um the lord jesus is reading from isaiah and uh, this is in the synagogue and he reads out verse 18 the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me okay so he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me and then he goes on to say all the things that he has been anointed to carry out okay so to preach the gospel to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim the liberty recovery of sight set at liberty to proclaim so to proclaim to set at liberty to free people to heal uh, to preach etc right so he says he's anointed by the holy spirit then we move to acts chapter 10 okay if we can move to acts chapter 10 and verse 38 um so there peter is sharing this so peter says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for god was with him okay so so anointing talks about the presence of god the anointing talks uh, refers to the empowering of god the holy spirit right so empowered by the holy spirit uh, accompanied by the holy spirit uh, so the, the presence of God and the power of God in order to carry out several things, right? uh, in order to carry out an assignment. So in the Old Testament, we see several examples, you know, leaders who were anointed by the Holy Spirit. Um, like we see uh, statements like the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord came upon this person and the person actually uh, carried out the assignment, you know, the judges. Um, the spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet, and the prophet spoke and carried out, uh, conveyed the message. Okay, so we see several examples uh, in the Old Testament as well. Okay, so so when we see that, we 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 um, we we can infer that it is the anointing, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit, it's the anointing of God that brings to uh, work the works of God, or, or, you know, in other words, that really births the supernatural. Okay, uh, let me just, uh, yeah, I'll just project the notes just a minute, please. Okay, so the, it's the anointing that births the, I think it's coming up on your screen. Okay, it's the anointing that births the supernatural. Like we see Joseph, we see Moses, we see David, uh, we see Elijah, who went over and above their natural understanding or natural abilities or capabilities, or sometimes even human abilities or capabilities. Like in the case of Elijah, who ran faster than a chariot when the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, or, uh, or the strength that came upon Samson. Right? So, it is the anointing of uh, God that brings about the supernatural. The anointing of God also brings about a lasting work, in the sense, um, it brings about deep uh, change, transformation. It's the spirit of God, because we can, uh, you know, people can be excited, or we can excite people, we can cause people to be stirred up emotionally. Um, by some of the things that we do and say, you know, we can be moved by great oratory. We can be moved by uh, emotional speeches and and so on. 
right? Uh, and it can last for some time, and that excitement will will obviously just go away. But when it's a work of the Holy Spirit, now it is lasting transformation. It it remains, right? When the person receives, of course, it depends on the person receiving and being uh, open and submitted, yielded. Um, but the work of the Spirit brings about uh, causes lasting work, or work that remains uh, for a for a for a you know maybe till the end of uh, uh, that person's life. It remains with that person. So. Um, the Lord Jesus says this in John 6, 63, and uh, he says that it is the spirit who gives life. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So they, the words, uh, the word of God brings about life, brings uh, about change uh, and transformation, you know, as drastic as death to life. And uh, um, that is possible because of the anointing. It is also the anointing that breaks demonic yokes and burdens. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 10, 27. It shall come to pass on that day that his burden shall be taken away uh, and his yoke uh, from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Okay. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Um, Isaiah 59, 19 also talks about how when the enemy comes in, the spirit of the Lord raises up a standard or raises up a barrier or protection against it. Right? So we see that it's the spirit of the Lord, the anointing of the Lord that breaks the work of the enemy, breaks the hold or the yoke of the enemy. Okay, So uh, it's the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. So it's it's not like, uh, you know, so that is why uh, the Lord Jesus says that this will happen when the believers, those who believe in me, they will go lay hands on the sick. They will cast out demons. Right? It is the anointing. It is the presence and power of the Holy Spirit uh, who indwells us that causes the, the work of deliverance. Right. So there is, it is not a formula of just chanting the name of Jesus over and over again. Uh, but it's the presence and power of, uh, of the Holy One who indwells us. Right? Because uh, the sons of Skeva, if you read in the book of Acts, we see that the sons of Skeva did the same thing. Right? They, they went about, they didn't have the presence and power of the Holy Spirit uh, because they, they knew about the name. They chose to use the name without having the intimacy or the relationship. And... Uh, uh, and the the, the the spirit actually attacked them, and and they went, you know, uh, attacked them, tore their clothing, and so on. So we read about that. So we see that it is the anointing that breaks the yoke of the enemy. Okay, and we also see that there are varying levels of anointing. In the sense, um, in the Old Testament, we read about how the seventy leaders or the elders received a portion uh, of the anointing. Well, God chooses to take that. That was the uh, the anointing that was upon Moses, and uh, he he uh, also places that on the um, seventy others. So this is for the the purpose of carrying the load of responsibility of leadership. Right? So he does that, and then they start prophesying. Right? Uh, we read about that, um, but we see that there, it was a portion. Of what was on Moses, which was laid uh, on 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 the elders, okay, or on the on the leaders, right, seventy leaders. Um, we also see that Elisha had a, a double portion of Elijah's anointing. In fact, he asks for it and he receives it. So uh, this anointing comes from God. Okay, it's not from man, especially when it comes to double portion. You know, man cannot give. It comes from him you know because it is about the presence and power of the lord okay um well we need to be and we can be repeatedly anointed well we see in um, uh, in, in uh, Ephesians. uh let me read that be filled with the spirit so which means that continue to be filled with the spirit of god uh, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. So, um, 
Ephesians 5 and verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. So that word be filled, meaning continue to be filled with the Spirit. Right. So it's a, it's a continual thing. We can, uh, you know, it's an ongoing thing. So we can be anointed afresh. Uh, Psalm 92 and verse 10. Uh, the psalmist says, my horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Right, And of course, in the book of Acts, we have, we have read, we have seen that they were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they were anointed over and over again. They were filled with the Spirit. Um, so this fresh anointing is available for us. Uh, and uh, it is it is available for the believer, right, for us. So it's up to us to receive, ask and receive, and be filled afresh uh, to do the works of God, right, to do and carry out our responsibilities. Um, we see that when it comes to the anointing, uh, there is, the anointing can be released or transferred or imparted. Um, through the laying on of hands or through people, okay, we see that in that is also scriptural, right? That uh, uh, that God specifically gives instruction for to Moses uh, and to say and 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 of course God can do it sovereignly, right? God can do it sovereignly as He did with in the case of Moses and the um, seventy others, seventy elders. Uh, but God also uh, we see. Both in the book of Acts and also in uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, uh, in the Old Testament, we see that um, there was this laying on of hands, like Moses did for Joshua, and uh, uh, and from that day, you know, we, we see that he was uh, uh, he was been seen as a leader. The Spirit of God was working in his life, um, so God can do that. Right? And God chooses to do that for whatever reason He chooses to do that. So there is the the release, uh, the transfer um, that happens because of uh, uh, through human vessels, right? Okay. So um, with regard to that, um, okay, we, we'll come to. Uh, I just want to talk about a little bit of uh, safeguards and so on, or extremes when it comes to, uh, you know, when it comes to laying on hands or transfer of anointing. Okay, but but we see that it is scriptural laying on of hands. Uh, for God uses human vessels to impart to release the anointing. Okay, um, there's something also called the corporate anointing. Okay, in the sense that as believers together, when we seek God, when we desire the presence of God, okay, the Lord, uh, you know, I'm just using the word show up, shows up, you know, but. But really, you know, I'm just using it quote unquote, you know, because we use it, you know, the Lord showed up. But the Lord is always there. But the fact is that He manifests His presence, or we as believers experience more of, or we experience tangibly the manifest presence of God. Right? We see that in the temple that Solomon built and inaugurated, and during the inaugural worship. Time, um, Second Chronicles five talks about that. They they all worship together and with one voice, one you know, one sound. The instrumentalists and the musicians they they worship the Lord, and we see that the presence of God uh, filled the temple. It was like a cloud, a glory cloud, filled the temple so much so that they could not continue to minister. And it was they were completely overwhelmed by the presence and power of God. So we see that happening. Um, we see the 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 early church coming together and praying with one accord. Uh, let me just go to that uh, scripture. I think it's Acts chapter. Yeah, um, Acts chapter four, and we look at verse. Uh, 30, 31, right? So they pray, and it says that um, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. 
right? So uh, they came together, they were in one accord. We read about it, that they were in one accord, in agreement, uh, in prayer, in supplication, and they experienced, uh, you know, the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And the whole place just says that the, the place where they were assembled together was shaken in the sense. The whole environment completely changed because of the manifest presence of God, right? Which was which was evident tangibly, right? So we see that um, uh, this, is, uh, this is possible, this is available. Uh, when we when we seek God together as uh, as a community as uh, you know uh, so we call we can call it the corporate anointing right where um, God releases his presence and power um, in a tangible manner again it is for a purpose you know for the body body of Christ for that local community um, to do things to represent him uh, the world outside. Right, to go out and and carry out, uh, do the works of God, you know, it it comes with that, and also you know their personal needs also being met. Like maybe uh, they're carrying some heavy load, you know, in terms of oppression or they some burdens, worries, cares, uh, everything just taken away in an instant, and uh, you know, and sovereignly God moving among them. Okay. We we see another example in. Uh, uh, in Acts chapter, I think, 15 or 16, where, um, sorry, 13. Now, they gathered together, Acts chapter 13 and verse 2, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted, and the Holy Spirit spoke. Right, So the they were together as a corporate body. It talks about uh, that they were teachers, prophets, and some of them are named in verse 1, Acts chapter 13, verse 1. And Acts 13 verse 2 talks about that they were the fact that they were serving, ministering to the Lord. They pray, they were fasting, they were seeking God, and God spoke, and uh, and that was the first missionary journey instructions uh, for Paul. I'm sorry, for Barnabas and Paul to be uh, who was called Saul not to be separated uh, for the mission that God had for them. Right. So we see that uh, there was an instruction which came as a result of that, uh, uh, of the of the church seeking God together, fasting and seeking God together, right? So, um, so, so we see the there's something called the corporate anointing. Okay, so the presence and power of God is tangible. When we say tangible, we're saying that it's it's uh, you know available or we can sense. Uh, in our physical senses, it's tangible at times, right? It's tangible to our natural senses, definitely tangible to our spiritual senses. Um, you know, coming like uh, uh, like heat, right, surrounding us. Um, there's uh, maybe joy and uh, something like what they experience in the temple. There's a weighty glory of God and. Um, Everybody is just still, and they're not able to, you know, go beyond that that moment, and they are, you know, just caught up with God and uh, and what He's doing in their hearts, doing in their lives, and uh, and we read in history also, you know, we see uh, about the tangible manifestation of His presence, right? So we see the tangibility of the anointing. So it is possible that uh, we're completely overwhelmed either physically with our physical senses and that God makes himself um, known to our physical senses and also uh, definitely to our spiritual senses where we experience the presence of God in a powerful powerful way okay um, okay I think these are some things that we have already seen uh, on the ministry gifts and so on okay. Um, so any questions here uh, before we move on to the names of the Holy Spirit about the anointing, about the tangibility of the anointing? Um, I'm going to look at one more. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Any questions? Any doubts?
no questions at all. Okay. Fine. Okay, somebody has a question. Okay, yeah, please go ahead. Abu Bakr. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Sir, I want to ask a question. Yep. And the question was on, is on transferring of uh, anointing. Hmm. Is it possible? Or can we choose someone that we can transfer uh, that attitude? I'm sorry, can you just repeat that? Is it possible? Uh -huh. Can we choose someone by ourselves to be transferred? of anointing. Maybe I choose someone, maybe one of my congregation, mm. and I just say, yeah, yeah, come, let me, uh, maybe I want to, is it possible, sir? Yeah. So we see that um, it is possible. We see uh, it is uh, scriptural. Um, like when we read uh, about Paul and Timothy, uh, Paul talks about the time when uh, you know, the elders gathered together and laid hands on him and prayed over him. And Paul reminds him in the epistles, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, he reminds him, you know, do not neglect that which was imparted to you uh, when we laid hands. Right? And Paul also uh, tells him uh, you know, very specifically, you know, so do not neglect the gift of God which is given to you by the laying on of my hands and uh, laying on of the hands of the eldership. So, yes, it is it is possible, um, but also uh, it depends on the uh, on the recipient as well. You know, the recipient is also seeking God, is also walking with God, um, and so on. So, which is what I want to um, like address in the next uh, next session. So, just want to talk about you know. Uh, the mechanics of that. We just want to, we're not going to go too much uh, deeper into that, but really talk about, you know, uh, what is the double portion, you know, uh, and uh, you know, um, uh, and some of those things. So yeah, so I, it, yes, it is possible that uh, when we lay hands and pray, that but it, we need to understand it that it is God who anoints, and it's not that I who, you know, push it on people. Uh, it is God who anoints. It is God who takes care of that, right? Uh, but then He uses us as human vessels to to lay hands and pray and so on. So yes, to answer your question, yes, it is possible. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Sir. Okay. So, yeah. You're welcome. So we'll take a break uh, for ten minutes, and then we'll be back at ten, and uh, uh, we'll continue with it. Thank you.